Hey, it's John Reed live from Acumatica Summit 2017. And guess who I have? I have the actual CEO of Acumatica, John Roskill here. How are you doing? I'm doing great, John. It's super cool to be with you again. Yeah, definitely. I kind of blindsided you with the podcast. So I appreciate you jumping on. You talked about some stuff that I think really transcends Acumatica. It's something that a lot of folks who are interested in modern ERP care about. So I want to ask you about that. Uh, but first, just for the listeners who aren't as familiar with Acumatica, you're a rising star in cloud ERP. You claim to be the fastest growing cloud ERP company, right? Yeah, yeah, we've been fastest so. growing for three years, and uh, we just we announced eighty three percent growth for twenty sixteen. Right, and uh, so that's on top of triple digit growth the year before, and um, significantly above all of our competitors in that. So I think that's a pretty easy one to claim when you look at most of these guys are. Um, are in the mid twenties to low thirties, um, you know, the net suites, the intacts, um, or, uh, the legacy guys are negative, you know, or flat to negative. So, yeah, yeah. When you post that graph up, it makes you look pretty good. Cause you guys are like a skyscraper and these other yeah. <laughs> the players are just well. hanging out at the bottom. So, and, and we're now at the end of day one, you've got another big day tomorrow with a lot of futuristic announcements I'm told tomorrow. So that should be yeah. interesting. Uh, what I wanted to talk to you about uh, for for several years now, I've heard you talk about multi-cloud. I think it's becoming more and more a reality for companies that they're finding themselves, they're finding value in cloud, but they're also trying to make sense of how they go forward with multiple clouds. And what are your thoughts on sort of managing cloud environments today? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting from a, a business user standpoint, I, I'm amazed at how many people I still meet who are like, the cloud, and, and they have this perception it's all one cloud. And it absolutely isn't. And, and it's, that's very clear that that's the way the world is going to be now. And, um, and by that, you know, I mean, Microsoft has um, several clouds themselves. You know, they have the Office 365 cloud. They have the Azure cloud. Um, it's interesting, Office 365 doesn't run on Azure, but I won't go there. Um, <laughs> they have the Power BI cloud. Uh, you know, we showed Magento today. They have a cloud, so we, we announced a Magento partnership. Um, we now also announced the DocuSign partnership. They have a cloud. And so um, the world is going to be many clouds. And the point I was making in the keynote is that as you think about modernizing your business software environment, it's really important that you think about um, the this, this set of core components of which ERP is absolutely one and making sure that that, um, that set of core components is going to be able to play in that multi-cloud mm. world. And when I say play, it means um, it's able to exchange not just uh, information, but be able to integrate at a, at a fairly seamless level um, so that from an employee standpoint, it feels like it's one system. That's ultimately what you're trying to get to. Right. And so then we get in discussion, it gets a little techie, which is, well, how do you make that happen? Mm -hmm. And so you're really looking for vendors that are supporting modern, um, typically REST uh, API, RESTful endpoints, REST API interfaces. Um, so modern web services. And, uh, uh, and then tomorrow, uh, we're going to show one, which is something we've been doing with Salesforce. And um, so these RESTful endpoints... There are also um, uh, new streaming interfaces that are starting to come to bear. And uh, being able to support that so you can be completely real-time on these integrations. Um, so that's the importance of at least the starting point of multi-cloud. So it's, a, it's, it's advice you would give to customers, I guess, that would be, you're evaluating ERP really differently than you are in the past, right? Because in the past, it was all about, oh, which product has the most functionality or what have you. And now it might be more less about a functionality grid and more about, well, how do you play nice with other products? And, and can we see your API library? Yeah. <laughs> it's a strange question to ask an ERP provider, but that's the world we live in now, right? Yeah, I, I, I think that's absolutely valid point. And, uh, you know, you do need to look at the certainly uh, starting off with the, the financial capabilities and then um, looking into some of the other modules. You know, it's important that distribution or something can do what what you need. Uh, but looking at the, uh, at the set of APIs, we believe we've, we've got one of the richest. I can't say I've done an intensive comparison mm. against everybody else, but what you find is pretty common in business applications 
is people build an application and then they do the API as kind of a wrapper around it. And so you can only get at the things on the edges. And that's useful only to a certain point. And that's one of the key differentiators on Acumatica's front is that we were built as a business a platform from day one. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's not wrapped around the edges. You can get at almost any functionality in Acumatica from uh, a REST endpoint or REST interface. And what that means is you can get at all of our business process workflow engine, all of our approval and notification engines. So you can do very, very powerful, um, uh, it's more than customizations. I mean, it's full, full um, moving the, operating the business on top of this platform. Right. I just did a piece with Eric Kimberling of Panorama Consulting, and he does surveys every year, and he's seeing a lot of trend towards cloud adoption in the mid-market for ERP. But the catch is that a lot of that growth, uh, it's, it's almost 50% according to his latest survey in, in his constituents, but a lot of them, 27%, they're more interested in what they call cloud is more of a hosted option. It's more about, and Eric was saying, I asked him like, why don't they go to SaaS? Because SaaS has so many advantages from a multi-tenant perspective, blah, blah. And Eric was saying, well, yeah, but a lot of these folks want to, they, they perceive SaaS as inflexible mm -hmm. and, and they want to keep all their customizations. And so they're basically, it's a lift and shift thing, right? It's not what we call true cloud in the industry. It's basically like put your stuff in a hosted environment and, and maybe you save some IT hassles. Yeah, no, that's absolutely. I mean, the, yeah. the moving it to that uh, hosted environment, it, it lets you potentially save some money on your IT costs. Um, somebody else is in charge of the infrastructure um, uh, in a managed service environment. And, um, and you certainly get some benefit from doing that, but you're not, um, you're still running on 30 year old software. It still has the same constraints that you had. And so that, that's kind of the challenge, right? Is that when, when you, uh, when we go in and talk to customers, everybody is typically running something today and, there's going to be effort required in moving. And it's kind of right. a question of like, where, when do you want to turn the dial? And what I always go back to is it's, you know, what are you trying to do with your business? Because just moving to the cloud, there's a bunch of people running around, like, yeah, move to the cloud, you know, for the right. for the, the sake of it, it makes no sense. Right? right. So you got to look at like, what are you trying to do with your business? And I, I'm sure there are situations that it makes sense to do what you're calling this lift and shift approach. Right. You know, maybe you're selling the business in three years, you, yeah. you know, it's, it's no long-term payback, but if you're looking to take your business, you know, it's, it's a, an active business, you're going to have it for more than five years. Um, it makes sense to think about modernizing the entire uh, business platform. Um, you know, almost everybody who winds up doing this with us on Acumatica that takes that approach from starting off thinking about the modern business processes they want to implement winds up saving at least two or three people, you know, full-time headcount. Uh, and that by itself can justify the cost of the, mm -hmm. of the software, um, uh, ad adaption. But, um, you know, going beyond that, you start to see other productivity benefits. Uh, the one I, I love to highlight, which I still see less than, I think less than 20% doing is mobile, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the other reasons to getting in the cloud is that now it's super easy for anybody doing mobile access to get at that stuff. Right. Yeah. Which brings you back to the importance of those open APIs. Whereas if you just have a, some hosted environment somewhere, it might not be easy to access that data or functionality anyway. Absolutely. And, you know, not to mention, I mean, do you, you get all the benefits of, you know, multi-zone redundancy? Uh, our experience on Amazon are just, you know, stunning. We're, we're getting like 99.987 uptime. And this is stuff that people were paying millions of dollars. I don't know if you're old enough to remember, there was this company called Tandem. And they used to sell these fault tolerant machines that ran like stock exchanges and they cost like $10 million and they would guarantee what they called five nines, 99.999, yeah, yeah. right? And Amazon's getting people that like, you know, effectively it's free on top of, you know, what, what they're paying for the computes. Right. So are we starting to overcome then this juxtaposition that Eric Kimberling was making with me around the relative inflexibility of, of SaaS? Because... Now, now, to some extent, I think I think there is some good aspects to a structured business process for folks to adapt to. But now we're seeing more and more 
I think, flexibility if SaaS is done the right way, right? Which yes. is essentially a platform approach where you can add on, you can extend. So you're not necess- if, if you know, it's not a deal breaker if, if the vendor, if they do the SaaS ERP right, it's not a deal breaker if you don't have it in your standard functionality. There might be some way to get it. Yeah, so that's great to bring me back to that. I, I, I didn't address that point um, on the flexibility directly, and we should. The, um, uh, you know, I'd say when you talk about SaaS solutions, there clearly are some low end ones. You can start with entry level things like zero and one and two, it's done. And they, they, you know, they're not ERP. They can do accounting. Um, they're, they're good at what they do, but they're in, you know, one level, they're incredibly inflexible because they have very little you can get in and customize. Right. Um, you know, getting into a platform like Acumatica where, um, we, you know, we sell Acumatic in both public and private cloud environments. It's one of our differentiators. And so the degree of flexibility, um, doesn't vary in that. You can do the same things you can do in a private cloud as you can in the public cloud. So the, the public cloud isn't limiting, um, flexibility. And so mm. that, that's just one, one of the strengths of Acumatica. And then as you start to look at doing, um, building your, your system, you know, like you could very easily start, we could start a business today and say, all right, I'm going to buy Office 365 from Microsoft. I'm going to buy, uh, Acumatica. I'm going to buy an HR solution. You know, it could be Zenefits on the low end. It could be Workday on the high end. It could be, we, we announced a partnership today with Infinity HR. And then the, those three systems together would all come basically out of the box with integration. Um, you know, we in Acumatica integrates with Office 365, the Infinity HR and Zenefits we have integrations with. So you've already got three, your three core. And then what else might you want would be a vertical solution. And depending on what vertical you're in. And again, like, you know, we announced uh, a, a few verticals today, you know, we have a field service edition that, um, will cover, I don't know, it's probably 20% of the businesses in the country can mm-hmm. start to customize in, in that. And so, you know, you're getting now getting in a system that is completely customizable for what your, your needs of your business and all in the cloud. Well, in my view, if, if in the mid market, if you're talking about, you've been talking about cloud ERP starting to take on the same level of adoption as HCM and CRM. It's not there yet, but that's the trend. It's going to have to be more vertical. It can't be just generic out of the box ERP if that's going to happen. Yeah, no, I'd agree. But, uh, and you know, in our case, we count on our channel partners for that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we have partners in, uh, every, every vertical industry, you know, from government to nonprofit to working in high tech and transportation to, um, you know, uh, discrete manufacturing. And the one we were joking about earlier was, was cannabis. You know, the cannabis industry is just exploding right now. Acumatica yeah. is uh, doing well in cannabis. Yeah. No, we've got, Cloud ERP. Um, we've got, you know, most of the, the, the top growers uh, in the country at this point. Are Which turns out to be it, a so. fairly complex business in a lot of ways, despite we might joke, but it really is. No, I mean, it's, it's full out. It's, it's a, me- it's being treated like, you know, a, a medical, um, you know, uh, a, not a supplement, but a, a, a true pharmaceutical in that there are batches and they have to be able to do recalls and is government tracking and um, as as uh, um, plants move from seed to seedling to plant they actually all have to have government track tag numbers on I mean, this is the stuff I've learned from visiting some of these guys yeah. and so you have to be able to move a product through uh, inventory stages basically work in process and you, right. need, you need full ERP to do you, this you stuff. absolutely do so, I think I'm gonna get kicked out of this room in a sec for your next meeting but just real quick uh, a lot of things seem to be going well what What's the biggest challenge for Acumatica in the year to come? Well, it it usually comes down to our own ability to execute. And as the CEO, one of the things I try to focus in on is not trying to do too many things. Mm. Um, it's super clear that we've got a set of ISVs that are really important. And these are guys like Magento or Jazz Systems on the manufacturing side. And so we're really, uh, what we're doing with these additions, like the field service edition or the commerce edition, is we're working to go even that next stage by putting them together in a skewed up configuration so that the confidence level that partners and customers can have out of the gate uh, is super high. I suppose before we wrap, I should congratulate you. You said that one point 
5 million people attended the show this year and <laughs> there's no way to dispute the number, right? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it's by far the most well-attended technology show in the world and the satellite pictures will confirm we'll, it. We'll confirm it, absolutely. We're looking forward to those. Thanks a lot for your time, John. All right, thanks, John. Always good to see you. Yeah.